Golf Grunion. Scout the beach. Then in their hundreds, females surf in on the waves, shadowed by eager males. They are here to spawn. But it's not going to be easy. Each female tries to propel herself as high up the beach as she can, to lay just beyond the reach of the waves. Drilling herself into the sand is the cue for the male Grunion to move in. They wrap themselves around her, jostling to fertilize the eggs. In the frenzy, many eggs are dislodged. Once flicked out of the sand, they won't survive. Although these fish out of water might seem vulnerable, the mass of flickering bodies confuses predators. The greatest danger comes as they wriggle back to sea. This is the moment the pelicans have been waiting for. Slightly deeper water means they can get their bills underneath to scoop out their victims. This female runs the gauntlet and makes it through. Her eggs will develop quickly in the warm desert sand and be ready to hatch in two weeks on the next spring tide. A mud skipper, a fish that spends most of its life out of the sea. It can walk on land and breathe air. Its life is very different from that of most fish. A fish out of water, maybe, but they thrive here in Japan. So what's made this upheaval worthwhile? The answer lies in the mud. As the tide retreats, it exposes mud flats. Sunlight hits the rich silt and tiny plants and animals flourish there. All food for a mudskipper. But life on land is not without problems. It's hard work to find a mate. J 
jumping high above the mud will get you noticed. Eyes perched on the top of their heads, the mudskippers keep a lookout for both friend and foe. And males fight those who intrude on their territory. They must also take care not to dry out in the sun. Rolling in the ooze keeps the skin cool and moist. For this smaller species, a better option is to retreat underground. So he digs himself a tunnel down into the mud. His heap of spoil is an indication of the extent of his excavations. flooding the tunnel twice a day, maintenance is a real burden. Northern Australia has the highest tides in the tropics, which expose vast areas of shoreline. And here lives a truly extraordinary species of octopus. Octopuses are marine animals. They live and breathe underwater. At low tide, most octopuses will be imprisoned in their rocky pools. But this is no ordinary octopus. It's the only one specially adapted to walk on land. It pulls itself along using the hundreds of tiny suckers that line its arms. Hunting for crabs, it walks from pool to pool. Apart from a rather startled fish. This one is empty. So the octopus moves on. A rock pool may seem like a safe refuge.
but the octopus's suckers enable it to move just as stealthily in water as out of it. Nowhere is safe when this octopus is around. The savage, rocky shores of Christmas Island, 200 miles south of Java in the Indian Ocean. It's November, the moon is in its third quarter, and the sun is just setting. And in a few hours from now, on this very shore, a thousand million lives will be launched. These crabs are all females, and of a kind that occurs only on Christmas Island. As darkness falls, more and more of them appear, clambering resolutely down to the sea. Now it's nearing midnight. Their numbers can only be guessed at, but on the island as a whole, there are probably 120 million of these crabs, and nearly all the adult females among them have chosen this time for their annual spawning. A crab like this is carrying about 100,000 eggs, and she has to shed them directly into the sea if they are to hatch. But that's a hazardous business for her, because although her far distant ancestors came from the sea, she herself is a land crab, and she can't swim. So if a wave sweeps her away, she will assuredly drown. But nonetheless, her compulsion to launch the next generation is irresistible. And when at length she does reach the sea, her triumph is apparently ecstatic. The crabs have picked the moment when the tide is at its highest, so that they have the shortest distance to travel across the beach to reach the water. The astronomical numbers of their eggs turn the clear ocean water into a black, turbid soup. As dawn approaches and the tide recedes, so the eggs are swept out to sea. It's high tide, and huge shoals of mullet are feeding in the shallows. Travelling at speeds of up to 30 kilometres per hour, they drive the mullet onto the beach. Trapped, the fish have nowhere to turn. Flattening out their bodies like surfboards, they skim in just inches of water. Surf mums are the only dolphins in the world that hydroplane and beach like this. It looks fun, but this is a high-risk game. They could easily strand, but with a few effortless wriggles, they're back in the water. Thank you. 